Hi, I'd like to show you a program I wrote to help me solve Minesweeper puzzles on paper. This is a book of, uh, called Mensa Challenger Brain Math and Logic Puzzles. And uh, they're meant to be done on paper, not like a one you might use on a computer. Um, so you keep track of um, your um, progress through solving it by maybe making marks on the paper like I've done here. I wanted to write a program that would do that for me. So um, here, um, I want to satisfy this one, which means in the eight adjacent cells, there's to be one mine. So I'm going to place a marker here where I think the mine might be. And uh, it satisfies this because it's changed to green. And it also satisfied this one. And it partially satisfies this one. When I put another one here, this one's now satisfied. Um, because the eight, in the eight adjacent cells, two, uh, two of them contain mines. Over here, this needs to have three, so I could do that. That also satisfies this. And we can do some more. I haven't solved this yet. I've got four for this, but I turned off that one, so one of these has to go. But that breaks that, so you kind of see what happens. But this is a nice tool for helping you work through the possible um, mine placements until you can solve it. And let's look at how the code works. This is written in uh, HTML and JavaScript, and let's start with the HTML file. And um, you saw some of that text on the page. That's, this is where it is. And there's a table where the, uh, the mine field, the grid, is generated. Right now, the table is empty, but when the JavaScript code runs, it'll fill in the table. Here on line eight, we bring in the MS helper, Minesweeper helper, JavaScript file. And that code then will run down here when we call two of its functions, init and build. Let's look at that JavaScript file now. The JavaScript file defines a JavaScript object called MS Helper, and that object contains data and functions. And here's what the, the mine looks like, and this is what an empty cell looks like. This is the one puzzle that it knows about. The, right now, the program doesn't work with multiple puzzles, just this one. And then these, are, these will be used to store the height and width of the, of the grid, and they're calculated here in the init function. The build function produces the, the map, or grid, or minefield, whatever we want to call it. Uh, and it gets called many times because things change as you add mines and take away mines. Um, so the first thing it does is remove any rows that are in the table now. So if the, if the minefield is already drawn, then it removes the eight rows. And then it defines several variables that are used. This function will um, get called when you click in a cell. And it calls another function called clicked that we'll look at in a moment. And then in this section here, starting on line 33, this is where the mine um, table is built. So here you see we're creating a TR, which in HTML makes a table row. Down here we're creating TD, the table data, so that there'll be eight of these for each TR. And then um, here's where we append those TDs to the row, and here's where we append the row to the table. So this loop, a loop within a loop, will build that table. Um, let's look at it a little bit more closely. This outer loop takes us through all the rows. This inner loop takes us through all the columns for every row. And then we have our cells array, which is up here again. And we need to use, we need to look at that to know what HTML to build to represent it. We look at the value in the cell that we're currently working on. And then we have um, a variable that's used to um, control whether we're drawing this one in green or not. Are the criteria satisfied for the cell? And if, and we also count the mines. 
that are placed. So if, if we've found a mine at this spot, we add one to this variable. If it's not a mine and it's not empty, then it's got a number in it. So we add one to the count of the criteria, and then we take that number and convert it into an integer, and then we look at all the neighboring mines. We count to find the number of neighboring mines, and we see if those numbers match. And if there are three neighboring mines expected and there are three neighboring mines, then this is true, and we set this variable to true, and we add one to the count of criteria that are satisfied. And then here's where we create the TD, which is the HTML element for uh, each table cell. And if we have satisfied the criteria, then we add a class called satisfied, which is what causes it to be drawn in green. And then we also add position, the row and column. We store that with each of these TD elements. And then we connect up the click function so that when you click, that'll get called. And here we add the row. Uh, no, here we add the TD, and then here we add the row. Uh, these four lines add the messages that are below the table. These. How many mines are placed, how many criteria are satisfied, and whether you're finished. Here's the clicked function, and what it does at a high level is simply toggle the mind state. Uh, so if you click on an empty cell, it puts a mine there. And if you click on a mine, it puts an empty cell there. And then it rebuilds. Um, it rebuilds so that you see the result of those changes. Neighboring mines is a function that counts the uh, in the eight adjacent cells the number of mines that it finds. And here are some variables it creates to help with that. Uh, row and column represent the center of the area that you're searching around. So above that would be row minus one, and to the left of it would be column minus one, and so on. And um, this function is mine returns zero or one. It returns zero if there's not a mine in that cell, uh, or the cell is not visible because it's off the top or left or bottom or right. And it returns a one if there is a mine there. So if you call that eight times, you might have some, you'll have some combinations of zeros and ones. And if you add all those up, you'll find out how many, um, the sum of the mines in the cells that are adjacent. All right, that's the end of the code. And uh, so I've shown you a program I wrote in HTML, and that's hypertext markup language, and CSS, cascading style sheets, and JavaScript to help me, and maybe you, solve Minesweeper puzzles um, that are on paper, and these help you um, keep track of your progress through the solution. So I hope you enjoyed that.